Well, that was interesting. Uh, I probably should have talked a lot more during that, but so this is the speedo gauge I got at uh, Carlisle for 15 bucks. Well, it had a broken uh, needle, and uh, now I know why. <laughs> uh, whenever I was trying to pry the one off the other side, well, for one, I think I broke it in general. Uh, I don't think you uh, pry those tips off. I, I don't know how you get that off, but uh, it looks like that little chrome piece is like crimped around kind of like how this is crimped around. Um, so I think I just broke everything, but it also just shattered that little piece. Uh, so obviously not very strong. So instead of spending $8, I uh, I used some aluminum TIG wire and just kind of bent the end, put it in the hole and then super glued it on, you know? Uh, hopefully the extra weight <laughs> doesn't mess anything up. And uh, it doesn't seem like it's rubbing. I was a little afraid it's gonna rub on there, but obviously I can uh, take that off and bend that if it does. But right now it's not hitting anything, but uh, I think it looks okay. You know, it's not white, but again, this isn't like a crazy restoration. So, And uh, if you think labor wise, I was gonna have to uh, figure out a way to get all that off anyway, to put the new piece on. So $8, you, you know, guys, if you want your, your cars on the road, just, uh, you know, maybe don't worry about all the details 100%. The one thing that does drive me a little crazy is, see how close it is down here in the bottom? Well, whenever it's up here, it's got this big old gap in it. <laughs> so I don't know if the gauge is just not centered. Um, me being a little OCD, that uh, drives me a little crazy, but whatever. So one gauge down, and again, like I said in the other video, I'm still looking for the full four hole one. There's a guy in Ohio that has one. I might just have to get it shipped here and it is crusty and looks horrible but same thing i have no gauges to put in it um if i find a nice one um then i'll just put that on but now back to the shelf baby steps on this truck
my camera died, so I had to switch to my phone. Uh, <laughs> I was using my GoPro. So what I did is I uh, kind of used these pieces, and then I had some gasket. If you if you don't have that at home, uh, get those gasket sheets. It's real nice for stuff like that where you don't really want to go to the store. And I know the originals didn't look like that. They probably sat in there real nice and clean, but this is fine for me. I cut it so it's the whole width of this, and then it cramp and it should shut it in there. This one I'm not as worried about. This one a little bit, but again, water can still get in there. You know, just a little spray paint job, nothing crazy here. And then I have to get those uh, sockets. And then uh, if you want to get crazy, you could weld those holes shut. If you don't want to get crazy like me, uh, you can uh, run a little screw in there and some RTV and then a nut on the back backside. Um, it'll seal it up good enough. At least these are done, you know presentable for the quality of truck I'm building. Cheap, easy, you know, I'll probably have $20 to get these lights going, maybe in the end. You know, not perfect, but it is what it is. Uh, this is, these are little uh, dual filament bulbs, but they didn't have a single auto parts store. So you just put those in, they're actually a little bigger than three quarters. So I had to open that hole just a touch more. And then you bend those tabs over. But there's already holes in there, so I just ran little washers. That'll also help ground it. Um, I tried to solder on a wire on there, but uh, I just couldn't get it hot enough to really attach like I wanted. Hopefully that grounds out decent. You know, I kind of like filed around where it all mounts, so hopefully it sits okay. I didn't realize how many parts <laughs> the grill had. Uh, so it has these little back supports, which are cool. There's a little uh, tabs that go into the grill pieces. I don't know why I kind of didn't know it had these little uh, pieces back here. Well, if you look, uh, some are riveted on and some are not. So I'm gonna drill the rivets out, pull those pieces off. I'm probably just gonna paint those like a flat black or semi-gloss black back behind them. I don't really want those to stand out. And I know, I think factory, they were kind of more of a silver color, but I think I'm just gonna do black because I want a black radiator. I want the chrome really to uh, pop. All those pieces look okay, which is good. I'm really happy I got a grill and didn't get like just grill bars <laughs> and think I was gonna make that stuff because that would suck. This is the lower piece and uh, I hadn't had it up here yet, but I didn't know if it's supposed to have a curve or not. Some of the problem of working on a new vehicle um, and not just the same vehicle all the time is you don't know what all the pieces look like, but if you try to match this up, you know, I'm not even, not even close. It's got this big gap. So I need to uh, bend all that out straight, uh, get everything to uh, line up. Cause this is obviously a nice flat surface. Um, and that's what I need this. So not brain surgery. I'm just gonna bend these, uh, this little flange over and then slowly uh, straighten this out. It looks like most of it, the damage is over here and this side. So uh, get that out straight, no big deal. A lot of hammering <laughs> off camera but at least that gap's close enough uh but there's still a lot of damage i need to fix again this is not a crazy restoration this is a splash guard up under to me it doesn't matter i don't even know if this big bulge is supposed to be in there that's the problem a little bit i don't have another one to compare it to so um definitely a good amount of rust in this side i would probably leave 
some of these smaller ones, but I'm already gonna be in it. So I might try to fill some of those without making panels. I might use some copper on the backside and, and uh, weld those up. This piece of bra, I'm gonna cut out and re-weld a new piece in there. I was really trying not to, because all of a sudden, a, you know, a $40 piece is gonna cost labor what a new piece is. So this is the problem using old stuff. But again, it's a splash guard up under your grill. Like if I didn't even have it there, I probably wouldn't even care. So I'm kind of like, we'll see. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get crazy. I'm not probably even grinding welds down all nice. You don't even see it. So, but I do want to fix this edge. It's a split and ripping up in here. So those uh, bolt holes, I do want to make sure and weld up. Um, again, I don't structurally, I, it's not the end of the world. It's mounting to this. Like, is it? does it really even matter? The other side project I'm doing today is uh, trying to uh, break all the white pieces free. I'm gonna paint all those, but some are riveted, like I said, and some aren't, but it's uh, crusty up in here behind the chrome. Uh, I also wanna clean that up, but I'm not getting two nuts on the grill. Like, I'm, I'll probably try to softly hammer out a couple dents and then maybe just hit it with some uh, you know, real fine uh, steel wool, just kind of clean up any kind of rust spots, but it's not, this is not a show car. I was trying to clean this up yesterday, I just didn't get done with it, but they had like welded a bunch of these on. And so I, I don't want it like that. I want it to be like the right, the right way. So uh, I need to look at some pictures and figure out that, but just cleaning that up, I'll eventually end up painting that, you know, radiator support. I am missing the top bar, but 99% sure it's just a uh, piece of angle iron, so I'm not really sweating that either, but uh, big news last night is, uh, you can tell, the garage is looking better because that engine's out of here. So finally, uh, someone came and bought that LS engine, so if you guys were uh, sweating, hating on me for uh, thinking about putting the LS engine into the Suburban, well, you don't have to worry, it's gone. So uh, I sold that, and then luckily that 4L60E that was sitting in the corner is gone too, so. All right, well, I guess since that engine's gone, uh, we're gonna need to put something in its place. So tomorrow, I'm supposed to go pick up a six cylinder, a 250, which is actually one of the newer style six cylinders. They're a little bit longer, but should still fit in the engine bay without having to mess with the firewall on the Suburban. Um, you might have to move the uh, radiator back a little bit, we'll see. But, uh, they got quite a bit more horsepower and torque than the uh, 216s, you know, they have good oil pressure. Um, I do like the 235s too, but this one came up, uh, this guy kind of, me and him were negotiating and then he bailed on me. I was trying to trade him for the uh, LS engine and then uh, now he needs help pulling his engine. So I'm gonna go down there, help him pull his engine, you know, buy the whole setup cheap. I think 200 for everything. Um, it also has a three on the tree manual. And I'm um, on the fence. I would love to hear everyone's opinion on, uh, should I keep the three on the tree? My column already had that, you know. They're a little different, so I'll probably have to mess with the linkage a little bit. Hopefully I can get it to work on the, uh, you know, 51 Suburban column and get all that going. I would like to keep it cheap, but I also want to drive, I will drive it. And I want my wife to want to be in it and drive it. <laughs> so if we're humming it 3,500 RPM down the, highway she might not be a fan so what do you guys think uh you think i should keep that three on the tree three speed you know that's obviously the cheap and i'm already gonna have it it's gonna be already running it's out of a 67 gmc you know maybe just replace the clutch disc and maybe uh you know machine the flywheel nothing too crazy maybe maybe clean up some things and obviously make sure everything's working right but it sounds amazing the engine sounds great or should I, there's a 400 small block I'm about to pick up for the 67 back here, I think. And it has the SM 465, but a two wheel drive behind it. And obviously I don't need it for the four wheel drive. I could put that in, those are four speeds. It has a granny first gear. Um, I kind of like that they're super strong, apparently, you know. The, it's the same training that's going to be in this four-wheel drive behind a 400 small block. The, that six-cylinder is not producing anything that's going to hurt it. The only reason I kind of want a stronger tranny is because I do want to camper eventually behind the Suburban, and I want to be able to tow with it and not have a heart attack.
So I do like the idea of a T5 swap in it and have a five speed with an overdrive. Um, and I don't even mind the labor or the fabrication, obviously that doesn't scare me, but the T5s are a little weak. I would not want to blow up a tranny and replace it. I want it to be reliable. I love the lightweight of the T5, but um, love to hear some people's thoughts. Anyone that's actually done that swap already or opinions. Obviously, there's all sorts of other factors. Like I need a rear end anyway because I need a open drive shaft. So, you know, I can mess around with the rear end gear whenever I buy that. That if I got one of the beefier trannies, I'm going to have to get a little bit beefier rear end also. So I have to be prepared because you know as of now i want to keep it cheap with the 250 but i think long-term goal would be uh i would love to be able to save up and build a really cool like 292 six cylinder with you know make a fun one uh i still want nice gas mileage that's why i go back and forth you know that's how all these projects are but um let me know what you guys think about the tranny you think i should just stick with the three on the tree it's already behind the six cylinder you know, so I know everything's working. You know, I, it'd be nice to have the linkage fit on the column. Um, you know, I never drove a three on the tree, so I don't know how big of a pain that is. And obviously, you know, it's an older, older tranny, older technology. So I'm sure it's a uh, doesn't shift and drive as smooth as a newer like T5 transmission. But we'll see. So I don't know. Going on rants <laughs> about transmissions and things that aren't even here yet. So. Hopefully tomorrow I can film. I gotta ask the guy and uh, hopefully you can see me uh, pull the engine out. Plus, another side note, and I'm not sure, uh, the person I'm talking to is the slowest person to respond of all time, but I'm supposed to pick up a hood for the Suburban also. And I already have hood sides, but I was missing that front support. Well, I might just buy this hood. Uh, if it's decent enough, I'll just put it on the truck and then sell the hood sides I have and hopefully get my money back. If not, I'll just have nice hood sides. I'll just still be looking for a front hood support and just have an extra hood because I'm sure I'll do another one of these trucks soon or another Suburban would be cool, but definitely one of these trucks. So let's get to it.